Where's my potato chips? Oh, we're not having chips tonight, Munchkin. Sorry. Doritos are a surefire hit. Guacamole Doritos, well, not so much. See if your favorite fizzled out to become one of the 10 discontinued chips that don't exist anymore. Pringles Prince. How much do you think Pringles paid these people? Hardly anything. The people over at Pringles aren't afraid of a little innovation when it comes to their chips, and this one did more than just add salt and flavoring to the tops of each chip. Although they officially hit shelves in 2004, Pringles prints began development in 2002 as a concept to make snack foods more fun and interactive. The idea was to slap words and images onto each and every chip in a tube of Pringles prints. The idea evolved from a test run with an inkjet printer at the Pringles office to intricately developing a process using edible inks and varying colors that were able to apply high-resolution images to the chips as they came out of the fryer. Each Pringles print included entertaining tidbits like jokes and pictures, and eventually licensed tie-ins with games like Trivial Pursuit and popular movies and TV shows. Although the novelty and popularity eventually waned, largely due to consumers being turned off by blue ink residue powder found at the bottom of tubes, there are still fans nostalgic for Pringles prints. Unopened tubes can still be found for sale on eBay for a price. A promotional tie-in can from the 2007 film Spider-Man 3 was listed for $53.99, and a can of NASCAR Daytona 500 sweepstakes prints can fetch as much as $100, even though you can't win the contest anymore. Pizza Hut and Doritos Pizza Cravers Contractor, no. I will not bow to any sponsor. Sometimes even a short-lived and discontinued chip can have a long and storied past, and the tale of the pizza cravers might just date back the farthest. After all, great ideas take time. It was back in 1965 when Pepsi bought out Frito-Lay to get its hands on the Doritos brand that would launch across the country in 1966. And it was 11 years later when Pepsi began building its restaurant division with the purchase of Pizza Hut in 1977. <laughs> Pizza the Hut! Still, nobody in either the boardroom or research and development department over those years came up with the crazy concept of merging the tastes of Doritos and Pizza Hut until 1996. The chips were rolled out from coast to coast in samplers and on store shelves, and were even included free with any delivery order from a Pizza Hut restaurant during their first month on the market. Reviews weren't raving, with most customers noting they tasted good but didn't really taste like pizza. Even though the combination didn't last very long and was eventually discontinued, they still left you with orange fingertips. Keebler Pizzeria Pizza Chips Pizza's here! The Doritos Pizza Hut tag team wasn't the first exploration into combining pizza and chips, as earlier in the 1990s, the Keebler Elves gave it a try. Released on store shelves in 1991, Keebler's take on pizza chips was truly dedicated to an authentic pizza experience. Rather than using potatoes or corn or other typical chip bases, pizzeria chips were the real deal — actual deep-fried triangular slices of pizza dough. The slices were served in three different pizza related flavors, zesty pepperoni, cheese pizza, and pizza supreme, and were so successful that Keebler reportedly sold $75 million worth in their first year. The following year, Keebler won two awards from the American Marketing Association, all thanks to the wild success of Pizzeria Pizza Chips. The run would eventually end, and after barely four years in production, they were tossed to the curb like an empty pizza box. Unfortunately, a sale of the Keebler Company and subsequent restructuring spelled the end for the Pizzeria Pizza Chips, and they haven't returned since. Nude Hour Channel? Then make our day and hit that subscribe button. Thanks! Now, more vanishing chips. Lay's Wow Chips Eating chips right after dinner? You pig! It's all right. Frito-Lay once introduced a new variety of chips to the world that they simply called WOW. But the end result was more of an OW than a WOW. Marketed as a healthier and lower-fat alternative to their traditional ingredients, the line included WOW versions of Lay's, Ruffles, Doritos, and Tostitos. The secret to the new chips tasting so good while managing to trim the fat content was an ingredient called Olestra. But instead of cutting calories, it would end up cutting into the chip company's profits 
appearance as well as its public image. Research showed an ounce of Alestra chips contain nearly none of the fat and less than half of the calories of an ounce of traditional potato chips. The studies also showed small but consistent cases of Alestra causing gastrointestinal issues when consumed in large doses. Nevertheless, Alestra was approved for use by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration in January of 1996, as long as food that contained it included a warning label about the possible side effects. You know, those gastrointestinal issues. Well, in hindsight, they should have used a bigger label. Those chips were recalled in the 90s for causing explosions diarrhea. Customers had some immediate and severe reactions to the new lineup of chips that ran the gastrointestinal gamut. Undeterred, Frito-Lay's WOW chips went nationwide in 1998, and for a while it seemed like they made the right decision. Customers were mesmerized by the idea of guilt-free chips, and WOW chips became the best-selling new product in the country in the first year on the market. But once the side effects caught up to the sales, the Frito-Lay folks might have been feeling ill, too. After just two years on store shelves, sales of WOW chips dropped by almost $150 million. Frito-Lay pivoted in the face of the bad publicity, rebranding WOW chips to Light Chips in 2004, but without actually fixing the issue of removing the Olestra. The company stubbornly hung on to the rollout of their gas-inducing grab bags for another 12 years before discontinuing them for good in 2016, which might just prove there's no such thing as guilt-free snacks, unless you're the company that's making money off of them. Sun Chips Sweet and Spicy Barbecue you have ruined a perfectly good barbecue with your demands and chatter. Sun Chips were introduced in 1991 and were a wavy-shaped, healthier spin on traditional chips with flavor combinations that were unique from the usual Frito-Lay fare. Frito-Lay ditched the idea of making just another traditional potato-based chip, and instead, Sun Chips are made with 100% whole grains. To this day, the brand has subsisted on four signature flavors, Harvest Cheddar, Garden Salsa, French Onion, and Original. Other flavors have come and gone over the years, but none seemed more beloved than Sweet and Spicy Barbecue. Debuting in 2013, this particular flavor was a blend of sweet tastes from a combination of honey, molasses, and brown sugar, alongside spicy hints that provided a balanced barbecue taste. While popular, it didn't last long in the lineup, as Sun Chips had reported a double-digit decline in sales between 2011 and 2014, and Sweet and Spicy Barbecue was discontinued, more a victim of bad timing than of its deliciousness. Lay's Garden Tomato and Basil Chips Crispy. Thanks for doing it. Salty, not too greasy. In another short-lived stint with a veggie twist, Lay's introduced garden tomato and basil chips in 2011. They were released for a limited run and were well-reviewed as a light summer snack. But when the sunshine season ended, the garden tomato and basil run did too. And unlike its counterparts growing in the garden, this one didn't come back in the spring. While no official reason for the discontinuation was ever given, fans of the flavor didn't need one to make their demands heard. Would you like a chip? A petition sprung up on Change.org, which has collected thousands of signatures over the four years it's been active. It drew enough attention that Lay's took to Twitter in the spring of 2021 to let fans know there just wasn't enough demand for garden tomato and basil to return to the shelves. But just over a year later, they might have changed their tune. In the summer of 2022, an Instagram post from parent company PepsiCo showed a redesigned garden tomato and basil bag, although it was quickly deleted. The chips never did return to shelves that summer, but that hint has given everyone hope. Lay's Wavy Milk Chocolate Covered Chips Wait a minute, what am I thinking? Chocolate is poisonous to dogs. While it seems the healthy or veggie varieties of some chips don't stick around, the same can be said for their chip counterparts. Some discontinued chips went the opposite direction of healthy brand marketing and doubled down on some dessert deliciousness. The concept of adding sugary Sweet. sweetness to salty treats is nothing new, with the basic idea being traced back to the invention of the chocolate-covered pretzel back in 16th century Germany. As the story goes, in 1544, a chocolatier and a pretzel baker decided to join forces, and the tradition of salty, chocolate-covered treats was born. Piggybacking on the simple idea, 
Lay's tried their hand at it when they dipped their wavy line of chips into milk chocolate back in 2013. The bags were 5-ounce portions, and the new product was given a trial run around Valentine's Day. Well, it turns out the sweet and salty treat didn't stick around and hasn't seen another national release, limited or otherwise, since 2015. In a brief but fleeting Valentine's Day contest, Lay's social media gave away a handful of limited-edition bags of chocolate-covered comfort food back in February of 2021, but that's been it for the Factory Direct version. Fans have cobbled together various recipes to recreate the chocolatey chip at home, and Lay's themselves have posted a do-it-yourself recipe on their website. Still, the lack of a sustained release since they first hit the market has left more people feeling salty than sweet. Pringles Dessert Flavors And what are you making, Monica? You know, in case Rachel's dessert is so good that I eat all of it. Another giant in the potato chip game took to feeling sweet and also tried going the dessert route. A year before Lay's went with the chocolate dipped strategy, Pringles introduced a line of sweet holiday inspired tastes in October of 2012. Cinnamon sugar, pumpkin pie spice, and white chocolate peppermint all hit shelves, adding a sugary spin on the pop the top treat. The Pringles take was a little different than the traditional chocolate dipped or coating dipped method in that the chips were prepared exactly the same except with the sugary flavor powders instead of the familiar salty ones. Fantastic chocolate. Is this your first cake? Is my first You're winding cake. me up now, aren't you? Fans didn't quite take to the Christmas chip concoctions, and the idea was shelved for three years before being retooled for a return in 2015. The second round included a churro-inspired cinnamon sugar tortillas flavor, white chocolate, and pecan pie varieties, but again, the sweet stylings disappeared after their short run. Another national rollout of flavors didn't occur until 2020, and with their inconsistent returns coming further and further up Part, fans might have to start writing to Santa to get these back, so make sure you're not on the naughty list. Guacamole Doritos He's here to make us some guacamole. I love guacamole. Who doesn't? The snack ideas that have staying power are usually simple pairings that complement each other. One such timeless combo is tortilla chips and guac. So translating that idea to two-in-one chips seemed like a slam dunk for the Mexi-inspired taste of Doritos. Finally coming together to hit store shelves in 2003, guacamole Doritos were covered in a distinct avocado green flavor powder and were easily expected to become a mainstay in the snacking community. But after only three years, the mean and green chips disappeared. Unlike the Tostitos version of a guac chip that they've dubbed Hint of Guacamole, the full-flavored pun punch of the Doritos version might have been too much for most customers. Early reviews from 2003 noted they tasted like nacho cheese Doritos with a slight guacamole aftertaste instead of the guac being front and center. They made a brief return to the U.S. market in 2013, and limited releases were spotted in Canada in 2017 and the United Kingdom in 2020. But for the time being, this supposed slam dunk looks to be a dud. Doritos Collisions Oh, Jeremy's in trouble! That is not looking good! The holy guacamole experiment wasn't the first time Doritos tried a mix-and-match scenario that didn't stick around. In the case of 2007's Doritos Collisions, however, the flavor mix was much more literal. Instead of the flavoring on each chip being a mixture of two tastes, Collisions went half and half, with two flavors of separate chips in the same bag. The taste combinations took inspiration from other munchies that are usually paired together, which required Doritos to come up with completely new chip flavors that they did not sell individually, just so they could pair them together. If you're going hard enough left, you'll find yourself turning right. For example, blue cheese Doritos didn't exist, and neither did Buffalo Hot Wings Doritos, but they were both invented and then came together in a collisions bag. Combos like cheesy enchilada and sour cream, or pizza and ranch, also required the creation and manufacturing of brand new tastes. In the end, the process became inconvenient for the company, and collisions crashed out of the chip race. Got a favorite you've seen disappear? Let us know! And tap or click another great video, hit that subscribe button, and ring that notification bell!